everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be discussing the best laptops you can buy on a budget. Not everyone can afford a laptop that costs thousands of dollars, and more importantly, there are plenty of everyday people who just don't need to. They only want a laptop for work or school, and that is going to be the focus of today's video. How to not go broke purchasing a laptop while at the same time getting the most bang for your buck. The first laptop we're going to take a look at is going to be the Lenovo IdeaPad 3. Even though this one is at the bottom of the list, it's not a bad machine at all. In fact, the only reason we stuck it at the bottom was because of the screen size being only 14 inches, while the other laptops on this list are all 15.6 inch. And myself, personally, don't like to use anything under 15 inches. The IdeaPad comes preloaded with Windows 10 S has 4 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM on board with a slot to upgrade with another 4 gigabyte chip. It has two USB 3.0, one USB 2.0, and one HDMI and one combination audio jack. It uses Intel UHD graphics, supports SD cards, and has a 128 gigabyte solid state drive. The CPU is Intel Pentium Gold, 2.4 gigahertz dual core processor. For normal, everyday functions or managing your business, this laptop will perform just fine. Next, we have the Dell Inspiron 3580. The Inspiron has 8GB of RAM and is loaded with the Intel Celeron processor 4205U. But its speed is only 1.8GHz and that to me is just meh. In fact, it was hard to not put this one at number 5 just because of that. With speeds that slow, you're definitely going to run into some lagging and freezing if you try to run too many programs at once. So you'll have to baby this laptop. It will function perfectly fine if you're only running two or three programs simultaneously or just want to use it for some web browsing or watching Netflix or YouTube while traveling. But at its price point, you could do so much better for the same amount of money. Third, we have the Acer Aspire 5 Slim. I want to be clear that the top three on this list were kind of hard to choose from. Any of these three I would recommend to anyone. The reason the Aspire is third is only because it only has 4 gigabytes of computer memory, which is fine for everyday tasks, and with its price point is worth every penny. But you are going to find it ill suited for anything too technical like heavy usage gaming or editing softwares. It has a 128 gigabyte solid state drive and comes with Windows S. It does use the AMD Ryzen 3 3200U dual core with Vega 3 graphics and it clocks up to 3.5 gigahertz which in my mind only sticking to 4 gigabytes of memory with that video card just seems like a missed opportunity to me. Though I'm sure if you dug enough you could find one with 8 or upgrade it yourself if you're tech savvy but any of that is going to run the price up. So if you want that extra oomph why not just buy a laptop that already has it? like our number two choice, the HP Pavilion 15. The Pavilion comes preloaded with Windows 10 Home Edition, has a 15.6 inch screen, runs on the AMD Athlon Gold 3150U dual core processor at 3.3 gigahertz, and has a 256 gigabyte solid state drive, and it has eight gigabytes of computer memory. This machine can do everything the Lenovo could do, plus it could probably handle some light gaming considerably easier than the IdeaPad. So if you're mostly professional but like to play games in your spare time or do any video or photo editing, I would pick the Pavilion, which is hard for me to say because I've never really been a fan of HP. Sorry, not sorry. Last, we have the Asus VivoBook 15. If you want a laptop that is affordable and can function in just about any situation, this is your laptop. Its hard drive is a little on the small side at 128 GB, but it is a solid state drive, and unless you plan to download a bunch of apps or store a bunch of pics on this thing, 128 GB should be plenty. And if not, it does have an SD card slot, or you can always add external memory later when you need it. If none of those solutions sound good to you, you can get the Vivo Book with a 512 GB SD card. It uses the AMD Ryzen 7 instead of the Intel. However, it pushes us slightly out of the below $500 mark we were shooting for, coming in at $549, where the 128GB model is only $440. I think the extra storage is worth the extra 100 bucks for sure, but if you don't have it, you don't have it, and I definitely get that. I will include a link for both models below for you either way. And that's going to wrap up another video. Don't forget if you found this video helpful to give it a like 
And I just want to announce to everyone that I will also be uploading some playthrough style gaming videos. There may even be one up already, so check them out. The first series will be on the new game from Firefly Studios called Stronghold Warlords. I am thoroughly enjoying this game so far and am beyond excited to share it with all of you. Until the next one!